But this, this adaptation, again, is not involving new genetic information. In fact, the process causes the loss of the genetic information for short hair. Great diversity is possible through the new combinations of existing genes. Uh, even mutations can cause rearrangements of chromosomes and degenerate changes, a loss of information which creates diversity. This is a fundamental problem. Mutations and natural selection both result in loss of genetic information. So there is no way that evolution of increasing complexity can occur. It is impossible that new information is coming from a random process. If you see a computer program, it needs a programmer. If you see a car, it needs a designer. If you see the biological information in the cells, then we must say, that is the right conclusion, it needs a creator who has made the program, the genes, to create the proteins, to create the organs. It is necessary that we have this. So we can say evolution is an impossible process. Every school child learns the supposed evolution of the horse, from tiny ones with multiple toes to large, one-toed modern horses. What were their ancestors like? You can trace the evolution of equids. The clues are in their stars, feet, and teeth. From four toes to one toe, from short teeth to long teeth, from browsers to grazers. Choose one of the lightest buttons. Choose now. But has the horse really evolved? Many scientists doubt it. There are many different varieties of horses we can get through breeding, but they're still just horses. We can get large ones, small ones, even ones with three toes. Evolutionists put these into a sort of a sequence and add a fossil rock badger at the bottom and then claim that's evidence for evolution. But you take out the fossil rock badger and you just have variation within a kind. Horses breed horses. That's not evolution. The information required for large-scale evolution can really not come from random mutations. Uh, the Darwinian model says that it does, but nobody has ever made a calculation to show that it does. I've made a calculation that shows that it doesn't. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? There's a popular misunderstanding of evolution which says that uh, fish turned into reptiles and reptiles turned into mammals and, and so somehow we ought to be able to look around the world today and look, and look at our ancestors. We ought to be able to, to see the intermediates between fish and reptiles or between reptiles and mammals. We ought to be able to see fish kind of on the way to becoming reptiles. But of course that's not the way it is at all. Fish are modern animals. They're just as modern as we are. They're descended from ancestors, which we're descended from. Way back 300 million years ago, there would have been an ancestor, which was the ancestor of modern fish and the ancestor of, uh, of modern, modern humans. And that ancestor, if you could have been there then, you could have seen the first steps towards a fish, uh, say, coming out onto the, onto the land and, be, and becoming, um, becoming a, something like an amphibian. But that was a long time ago. You wouldn't expect to see that today. If one were to believe the near Darwinian account, uh, you would have to say that information is built up gradually in small steps, uh, a little bit at a time. And if one examines the, the mathematics of this sort of thing happening, it turns out that one has to assume that at any stage in evolution that there are a large number of possible mutations 
that could occur that could be adaptive. And if there are a large number, we should be able to find some today. Uh, and the fact is that we don't. All the mutations that have been examined on a molecular level show that the organism has lost information and not gained it. The Genesis account of creation implies that virtually all genetic information existing today was present in the original kinds. So, great variation is possible within each kind, but one basic kind cannot change into another. Michael Denton believes information can only come from an intelligent source. I, mean, I tend to think that, in fact, the, the evidence suggests a transcendent sort of Hebraic God uh, of the Judeo-Christian tradition. An external creator made the world and, and gave it its order, its pattern, and its ends. Um, it's consistent, I think, with the evidence, though. It's consistent with it. Just as the information in books has to come from an intelligent source, so the huge amount of genetic information in living things must come from an intelligent creator. The evidence fits the biblical model, where there's a large amount of genetic information created in the beginning, allowing adaptation within the kind and being degraded since. The information had to be programmed into the living things in the beginning. Living things did not evolve, they were created. If we look to the Bible, then we see there is a creator. The creator has made all things, the material processes and also the information. Evolutionists believe complex life forms came from simpler ones, but random processes with natural selection can't account for it, and it's never been observed or replicated. The accumulation of gradual changes produced by lucky chance has never been shown to add new information or increase complexity. Creationists believe that all the evidence points to a creator. Dogs may be hairy or bald and frogs may be spotted or green. But dogs will be dogs and frogs will always be frogs. Even with a kiss from a princess, a frog will never become a prince. Thank you.